life students. Now, now, we are so glad that you are able to join us this morning on our last day of college week. We're so thankful for your participation this week. The College Access Program is an initiative between Learn for Life and higher education institutions. We partner with HBCUs and Hispanic serving institutions to bring to you secondary pathways of access and opportunity. Uh, this initiative by Lifelong Learning is one of equity. We believe in your future. We believe in your dreams and we want to make sure that you have the support to get there. This morning, we're going to have a very special guest speak to us, and I'm not doing the introduction. I am going to introduce the person who will. Good morning, Ms. Cheryl Moore. Ms. Cheryl Moore is a pastor. She is an advocate. She is an activist, and she is also our contractual cap manager. Cheryl, take it away. Michelle, thank you so very much. Thank you for being our visionary leader. Listen, Learn for Life students, TGIF, it's Friday, and this is the last day of our virtual college week. Thank you for hanging out with us all week long, and we finally reached the final day. It's bittersweet, but we are so glad that you have been participating and taking in all of this wonderful information. Listen, we're going to only have two sessions today, this one and the next one at the top of the hour. For some unforeseen circumstances, Hampton State University will be unable to join us today. So you just have to stick around with us for this one and one more, and then we'll let you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Is that okay? Of course it is. Listen, today we are so excited. I don't know what to say about this individual who's coming up to impart some words of motivation, inspiration, and encouragement to all of us. He is the president of the Poor People's Campaign. He is the architect of the Moral March movements. He is an advocate. He is an author. He is a pastor. And he is probably the most prolific activist of our time since Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Who are we talking about? We're talking about the man that you would see on CNN, MSNBC and all of the other news outlets in this nation. We are talking about none other than the Reverend Dr. William J. Barber II. And we are so grateful that he's taken the time to impart some words of wisdom to all of us here at Learn for Life. Are you ready? Let's take a listen. Hello to each of you. I am so honored to be able to join with you today 
all of you as high school students, and I understand that many of you have come through tremendous odds, and yet here you are. Here you are. You know, when you were born, there was a million other opportunities, other possibilities, and yet somehow you beat <clears throat> a million to one odds, and here you are. Here you are. My dear friend, Reverend uh, Cheryl Moore, asked me would I come and share with you a little bit of my story as you approach this your graduation day and many of you are being looked at and recruited by historically black colleges and universities. I think I want to do it in three parts. The first part is I just want to share with you uh, some poetry and one poem that I always have quoted I share it with my children. It goes like this, fleecy locks and dark or white complexion cannot alter nature's claim. Skin colors may differ, but perfection dwells in black and white just the same. Were I as tall to reach the pole or could grasp the ocean with a span, I must be measured by my soul for the mind is the standard of the man. And part of what that poem is saying is that it doesn't matter what color of our skins, the coarseness of our hair, that whatever I, go, I have in my mind, the strength of my mind is ultimately the standard by which I'm going, I will be, will, will demand that people look at me, my humanity. And I want to say that to you. Don't let anybody share, sell you short. There is no other you. No one can make another you. And you have purpose and power in this place. Purpose and power in this place. You're meant to be here. You're not some kind of accident. Uh, to tell, tell the truth that when you were born, something cosmic happened. Something powerful happened. Eternity and earth met each other. It's almost like that ring you just heard. It was like something went off in the universe. An alarm sounded and said, here you are. When I think about that, um, the second thing I want to put talk to you about is overcoming great odds. One of the things I spend my life doing, I want to encourage you doing it, is I find people who are quote unquote well known, quote unquote famous, and then I read the backstories. I read the stories nobody wants to talk about. Harriet Tubman had epilepsy because a slave master hit her in the head with a, when she was a little girl. And yet she's the one that, that led 700 people out of slavery into freedom. The, the girl with the epilepsy, the girl that would just fall asleep in the middle of, the, the middle of anywhere, or, or, or Frederick Douglass, born a slave, didn't know how to read or write, but escaped from slavery and taught herself how to read and write and study and became one of the greatest orators in the world. I mean, you have to look at these backstories. You have to look at these backstories. Uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, greatest president in this country's history, suffered from polio. He could not hardly walk. And he couldn't stand up. Four terms as president, he almost completed. Led us out of the Depression, led us out of war. Dr. Martin Luther King struggled with breathing issues because he was stabbed early in his life. And yet, this man with breathing issues is the one that to preach not only to the a pulpit, but to the entire nation. You know, Arthur Ashe, one of the great tennis players, suffered from terrible arthritis and yet became one of the greatest tennis players in all the world. Serena and, 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 her, and her sister Venus were told they never could come out of Compton and be world stars in, in, um, in tennis. And, and, and yet they were, and yet they did become that. There's a movie out called Hidden Figures and these black women who were brilliant, but they were told because they were black women what they couldn't do. And yet they became tremendous assets and tremendous scientists and physicists and engineers. I mean, you, if you go to these backstories, it's amazing what you find, the odds that people have overcome. It's kind of like the poem that Langston Hughes wrote uh, mimicking a mother talking to her son said, don't you sit down on them stairs because life is kind of hard because life for me ain't been no crest of stair, but I still climb and I still reach and landings 
And life for me ain't been no crystal star. You know, there's a, in, 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 in the study of aerodynamics, they study the uh, bumblebees. And it is said of the, bum, the bumblebee, uh, the bumblebee is not supposed to be able to fly. I mean, literally they have studied and physicists have done it and they said, here's the problem. He's too fat and his wings are too small because in aerodynamics, your wings have to be longer than your body and has to have a certain uh, width in order to have lift. And when you look at the bumblebee's body, his short little fat body and little teeny wings. And so aerodynamically, he's not supposed to be able to fly. And yet, in the summertime, what do you see all around just buzzing around is a bumblebee. Maybe somebody forgot to tell a bumblebee, you're not supposed to fly. Or maybe the bumblebee didn't pay any attention to it. And so I want to say to you today, not only read some of these stories and, and look at your life through these stories and, when, and understand that st stumbling blocks can become stepping stones. That you don't have to end up where you began and you don't have to stay where you fall. You know, all champions get knocked down sometimes, but they get back up again and again and again. And then I want to encourage you to be in the fight for justice, not only get a degree, but be in the fight because homelessness doesn't have to be, poverty doesn't have to be, people working and not making a living wage doesn't have to be, everybody ought to have access, universal health care and ought to have access to clean and affordable housing. That ought to be, a, that, those are human rights. And, and, and some of you are the greatest moral voices for that because you have been impacted by those things and you, you can speak to the nation. I pray that some of you one day will be in political offices and other positions of power. And when you get there, don't forget where you came from. When you obtain something, do not forget where you have come from. Remember it. And whenever you go in life, the goal is then help somebody. Do something. So that because you live, somebody breathed a little easier and somebody's burden was a little lighter because you live. Now I want to tell you my own story. You know, I was told, even though both of my parents went to college, I was told in 10th grade, I wasn't college material. You know, I didn't do very well on SATs. I, in fact, I didn't like tests. Uh, I went to North Carolina Central University, however, found great teachers and great professors who cared, who loved, graduated three times from different institutions. But I also want you to know that uh, around 1993, I suffered a tremendous medical challenge. And basically the doctor said, I probably would never walk again without a wheelchair or a walker. And for 12 years, I couldn't. 12 years, I went through depression, I went through hurt, Stayed in the hospital over three months, came out in a wheelchair and a walker. I never thought my legs would leave me because they were the strongest part of my body. I had been a football player. I used to leg lift weights. And here at 30, that's what I was facing. I, I kept preaching, even though when I would go into the pulpit, it felt like somebody had a knife right in the middle of my hip twisting it. But for some reason, whenever I would preach and speak to others and baptize and, and, and others and try to help people. I didn't feel the pain when I was trying to do something positive. And then I got a portion of my health and strength back in 2005. And I still limp with a cane, but this cane is a testimony because I was told that I would never walk again. And it hurt, but then I had a some people that got together, my family, prayer warriors, my doctors, uh, therapists, my swim coach. And together we built a community and together we stood up together. And, and so every day, even now while I'm speaking to you, I'm in tremendous stiffness and pain. My spine is so-called fused, my neck. The x-rays say I'm not supposed to be walking or standing or looking at you. I'm so glad that there is a strength of the human spirit. I'm so glad that, that there's a place that even if I was in the wheelchair, I'd still come and speak to you. 
Because wherever you are, you have to decide whether you're going to lean into your own possibility or whether you're going to give in to the circumstances around you. I know it's not easy. As I said, I went through depression, but depression doesn't live last forever. I went through tears, but tears don't have to last forever. Today, be encouraged. Now, lastly, I want to talk to you and say you're in school, and I know y'all not first or second grade, but I do want to reteach you your ABCs. As I know that many of you know, knew them, some of you probably laughing, what is he talking about ABCs? Well, when I was young, my daddy taught me some ABCs, and he said, I want you to carry these through life, and I want you to never forget them. He said, take the A and accept the challenge of every day. Take the B and be all you can be. Take the C and count your blessings, no matter what your cares are. Take the D and do right. Take the E and ever strive for excellence. Take the F and fight on. Take the G and get up and get going. Take the H and help somebody. Take the I and inspire somebody. Take the J and just say no to negatives. Take the K and keep on keeping on. Take the L and learn to love. Take the M and move mountains with a faith of a mustard seed. Take the N and never say never. Take the O and overcome your obstacles. Take the P and put your best foot forward. Take the Q and quit quitting. Take the R and run your race with courage. Take the S and stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Take the T and try. And if you fail, get up and try again. Take the U and use what you have to get what you need. Take the V and no matter what's around you, visualize your possibility. Visualize, visualize something beyond the negative moment. Take the W and work hard every day. Take the X and X-ray your own lifestyle. Don't be so focused on other people and critiquing other people that you don't X-ray your own lifestyle. Take the Y and yearn to be all you can be. Never forget that you overcame a million and one odds just to get here, however you got here. And then take the Z, take the Z and know that love knows your zip code, truth knows your zip code, justice knows your zip code, mercy knows your zip code, grace knows your zip code, power knows your zip code, promise knows your zip code, possibility knows your zip code. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. And because of that, there's always something right where you are that you can step on to step up and to step in and to step better. Wow, Michelle, that was powerful. That was poignant. That was awesome. Oh my goodness, learn for life. The really? Reverend Dr. William J. Barber II. Yeah, wasn't that great? Cheryl, it was wonderful, and I love the encouragement for our students. You know what? I live by taking the H and the I. You got to help and inspire people, but you know what? The X matters too, because you have to X-ray yourself and make sure that you are doing all you can do and being the best that you can be. What a wonderful message to us. Oh my goodness, that was so great. And then he went into the Z, right? Yeah. Uh, for life students, listen, like Michelle said, once you do the best that you can do, you've got to trust that there are certain things that know your zip code. He said power and victory and, and all of those positive things know exactly where you are. So our challenge is to do our part and just trust that everything else will come together for us. Isn't that right, Michelle? Yes, that's that's so true. And you know, it just really brings me to um, it being the last day of our college week and some of these takeaways that we've learned this week. And I'm just, and Lorena, if you could participate, I would really appreciate that because we got some really great takeaways from the FAFSA session. Um, if Michelle Van Kirk is watching from the alumni session, um, you know, hearing from the students themselves about their experiences, Sophia in community college and the other young woman in a four year, a dreamer in the four year institution. And so they were able to share out about that. But I just wanted to 
back up over the University of Laverne because it is a local school. It is our Hispanic serving institution. It was sponsored by Liga. Um, and they did a really great job in the participation of that. Um, so it is the only program in the state of California that still has a Bachelor of Science in Criminology, if you are interested in anything like that. Um, they have partnerships with Sirius XM and iHeartRadio. They have a radio station for mass communications for those who are looking to go into journalism. It is one of the only schools that still has a teacher education program. Um, there is a, a med program, pre-med program, I should say, and they also have kinesiology, um, which is the study of the body and movement, which is great for sports medicine and those types of things. So I want to highlight the University of Laverne. I thought they were great. Um, so I'm going to kick it to Lorena. Those are my highlights of the week. If you could tell me yours and then Cheryl. OK. Sure. Um, my highlights of the week definitely were the students. I mean, I think they really um, they're speaking from their experience, and I think that's important for other students to see themselves in these other students. That is um, huge. And just the, the varied opportunities. I mean, every time I, we have these, I'm like, I wish I was 18 again so I can go back to all these schools because <laughs> they all really, you know, speak to different parts of things that I like. So I'm hoping that students really heard something in these presentations that spoke to them that um, made them get a little curious to look into it a little bit more. And for that, I recommend that you reach out to the CAP program, that you reach out to your school counselor. Say, I don't know, something that was said in this, I'm kind of interested in like mass communication. What does that mean? You know, um, this school saying that they don't um, need SAT or ACT. Well, that kind of speaks to me because I really didn't want to take those tests. And so now that I know I have opportunities, so just to reach out for support. Those are the things that stand out to me that I'm hoping um, really spoke to the students and to the staff that were um, present during these different presentations. And Lorena, I know that you have a passion for parent empowerment. Mm -hmm. And I think about the round table yesterday and some of the advice that even our parents were able to get uh, to help their students. What were your thoughts on that? Yes, definitely. I mean, so many times, you know, as students, um, we want some things and we may know that our family is struggling or that maybe our parents don't speak the language and they're not going to understand and there could be a little bit of a disconnect. Um, but I really want to encourage the students to let the, te the your parents know that there's somebody, maybe you can't explain to them, but someone at the school can. If there's parents that are listening, reach out to the school and get more information. Um, because there are supports there, not just for the student, but for the parent, because it, it can, that's a big family decision. And we understand that. And we want to be sure that you feel supported in those next steps that really can change not only the life of the student, but of the parents and all the family members. Yes, that that's really true. That's what happened in my family. I went to college and then my younger brother and sister also went. So it makes a difference. So Cheryl, I know you from your seat this week, you were able just to do a lot of observation, to take a lot in on behalf of our students. So I'm really interested in your feedback from the week. Tell me, what were your highlights? You know, Michelle, it's been an amazing week. Um, I've been able to glean so much from this week. Um, we've had some amazing colleges and universities. Let's see, we had Howard University, Fisk University, Dillard University, of course, the University of Laverne. We had Federal State University, Morehouse College, Norfolk State University, and then later today, we're going to have Morgan State University. So we've had some tremendous schools and universities to come and share with our students and to give us some wonderful information. What I take away from basically all of those colleges and universities is the fact that they seem to be willing to do whatever it takes to ensure that students are enrolled in their colleges and universities and that they have a wonderful experience. Uh, number one, most of them are waiving application fees, uh, which can get expensive at about $50 or so 
for applications, so you don't have to worry about that. And in fact, the CAP program has a relationship with the Common Black app anyway, so that we can give you a code and your fees for applications are waived automatically through that. So that's one thing that I take away. All of them had wonderful support services to students uh, to take care of your holistic needs, uh, mind, body, and spirit that you can feel comfortable when you get there, that you'll be in an environment where you can thrive and do well and have some fun. So I'm excited about all the schools that we had. Then we had some tremendous speakers this week, didn't we? Goodness. Oh my goodness. Yes. yes, we had Alicia Thomas Searcy and we had Jennifer Thomas. And the one thing that I take away from Alicia is something that resonates, I think, with um, a lot of students. And that is when you don't have a great relationship with more of your parents. Alicia is very successful. Alicia made history at a very young age, but one thing that she said is that she did not have a positive relationship with her dad, and that spoke volumes, I think, to many of those who are watching, because even that can't be a stumbling block for you. You can still achieve greatness, so I appreciated the fact that she shared something so personal with us, and then Jennifer Thomas talked about being bullied. You know, she was a CNN executive producer. Uh, she runs the journalism department at Howard University. She has so many accolades and national awards for her work, but she said that she was called too dark. She was called ugly, uh, big eyed, all of that, that she suffered through bullying and everything else, but yet she's successful. And you know how much of that resonates with us. I was bullied uh, and talked about growing up and sometimes I'm still, I still am. <laughs> But how many of us have been through that, even with the way that we feel about ourselves, not feeling that we're good enough, not feeling as though we're smart enough, not feeling as though we we look good enough or that we have what it takes. But against all odds, these speakers told us that we can be successful. And of course, Dr. William Barber today and those alphabets almost took me out. Right. Yes. That was amazing. He talked about amazing. W working hard, X, X ray yourselves, T, you know, try. And if you fail, get up and try again. All of those things to encourage us not to stop and not to quit. And then we have Lorena on right now and, and our great counseling uh, department. I want to tell you students that you are certainly fortunate to have the support that you have at Learn for Life. Lorena, of course, uh, leads our counseling department and your counselors are amazing. Lorena is amazing. Uh, she shared with you that all you have to do, you don't have to know anything, just know who to reach out to, right? Yeah. All you have to do is reach out to a counselor and that individual will make the connections for you and share the information uh, and get you started. So it's OK if you don't know anything. It's OK if you don't know what you want to do or where you want to go. Just make the decision that you want to try and reach out to a counselor. They are there for you. Listen, you've got great teachers. You have a great faculty and staff and our counselors are bar none. And Lorena uh, is at the top tier of the class leading them on. So we're grateful for her. And then she talked to you about the FAFSA, financial aid. It takes money, unfortunately, to go to school. But she talked about the fact that there are so many avenues of funding for you. You just make the decision and we're going to make sure that you have what you need in order to get to college. So she talked about financial aid and all of the different avenues uh, for funding for colleges and universities. And you can do it, whether it's a two year a community college and you go on to a four year or you want to go straight into a four year college or university. There is a way and we're going to help you find that way and okay. get there and to be successful. So those are just some of my takeaways of the week. Michelle. Great takeaways. And also, Cheryl, just to bring up, what about Ricardo Rojas and Michelle Van Kirk uh, with their session? They did such a great job. And so we appreciate all of the collaboration across all of the Learn for Life departments. This is all on behalf of our students, so we really do appreciate that. Uh, before we go today, if you could give us five to seven more minutes, we were sent a video by Bowie State University or as they say, Bowie State University and their band. And they are giving us a wonderful shout out to our Learn for Life students. And we want to make sure you see that. Miss Joanna. College is an excellent opportunity. It's the next step at the high school. It opens doors for any and everything that you want to do for the rest of your life. So what I'm saying to you is, Come to Bowie State University. 
Join the Tennessee Soul. And live, live, go, two, right, and How wonderful was that? Bowie State has a wonderful band. And did you see those outfits? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That was wonderful. Get down on it. One of my favorite cool in the song gangs, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, one of the faves. Well, Miss Moore, we've had a wonderful morning. We had the Reverend Dr. Barber come and speak with our students. We've done our key takeaways from our college week for this spring. And then we had a presentation by Bowie State University and they gave a shout out to Learn For Life. So if you could take us out, tell us about Hampton University and our next presenter. Thank you so much, Ms. Moore. Thank you so much, Ms. Michelle. Listen, Learn For Life, don't forget, we only have one more session at the top of the hour, and that's going to be Morgan State University. So you don't want to miss out on that. And also remember that that's going to be our final session for the week. Hampton State University cannot be with us today. So we're gonna wrap it up at the top of the next hour. You don't wanna miss that, and we'll give you some final steps at the end of that so that you'll know how to connect with us and what to do as you pursue your journey to towards a college and or university, because we know that you're going to do just that. So in parting, I want to give you a challenge, and that is to be decisive, be determined, be daring, 
and by all means be darned that anything will ever stop you from pursuing your dreams. We will see you at the top of the hour. Take good care.